Welcome back everyone, Neuros McSparks with you. Now that we have all the pieces to our track, let's learn how we can use them to best effect to make our racing game the most fun we can, it can be. So to start off with, let's talk about straightaways. Straightaways just use the straight tile that we made in the previous lesson. And they're kind of the pauses in your game. They're a way to break up all the challenges of your race, give your players a little bit of breathing room. They can be a great opportunity for players to speed up, maybe even catch up to some opponents that are further along in the race than them. But keep in mind, because they're kind of easy and a little bit monotonous, you don't want to overuse them. If you make them too long or use too many of them, it can make your game kind of boring and doesn't really challenge your players. They don't feel like they're getting a lot out of it. So try to use them in strategic locations, maybe after a lot of challenging turns or something, to kind of give your players a bit of a breathing room. Next, let's talk about turns. And turns are kind of the meat and potatoes of a racing game. They're the primary challenge of this type of game, and having a good balance of hard and easy turns can make your racing game really satisfying. Now keep in mind, not all turns are created equal. Some are going to be easier than others, and you want to have a good mix of them. So let's look at some examples. So here we have three turns. They all do effect effectively the same thing. They turn the car around, they can go the other direction. But you'll notice that these two at the top get progressively sharper and tighter. Now this does a couple of things. One, kind of the obvious, it makes it a little bit harder to turn. It's sharper, there's not as much room, not as much time to get through it. So if you want to make a harder turn in your game, you want to make it a little bit tighter. Keep in mind, the harder the turn is, often the slower your game will be. Players can't really shoot through a turn this tight like they can through a turn this wide. And so it'll really kind of slow down the cars, which can be a good thing or it could be a bad thing depending on your game. So just keep that in mind that if you provide a lot of tight turns, it can make a very challenging game, but the cars will move very slowly and you may want to break that up so that people, the people can feel like they're speeding up, that they're going really fast. So let's look at another way we can play around with the challenge of turns. So notice all these turns have the same kind of style. They kind of weave back and forth. But as you get further and further down, these turns are going to be a lot easier. There's a lot more room to recover after the turn and prepare for the next curve up ahead. And so you'll move through this at a pretty good speed. It'll be a little bit easier. Just like the tightness of the turn, if you have the turns very close together, it'll make it hard to get through. Which again, can be good or bad for your game. You want to mix it up and want to provide some challenges where appropriate. Lastly, speaking of mixing it up, you don't have to make turns as uniform as I did before. You can make your turns kind of whatever shape you want. Notice here I made an asymmetrical turn. It's really wide on the left-hand side. It's really tight on the right-hand side. And this can do a couple things. This turn will actually change how hard it is as you're going through it. So notice as you drive through it from the left-hand side, it starts off relatively easy. It's a pretty wide turn. But again, it gets pretty hard as it gets to a really sharp corner here. You'll end up leaving this turn moving probably pretty slowly. Whereas if you take this same exact turn from the other direction, it starts off kind of tricky, but then you'll speed up, and you'll go a lot faster coming out the other side. So feel free to experiment with turns, play around with the sharpness of it, the length of it, to get the effect that you want, the difficulty that you want. Now what are some other things we can play around with for to change the difficulty of our track and change how dynamic it is? Well for this we're going to have to step outside of kind of what, what a normal real racing track would do and go a little bit fantastical. And what racing game would be complete without a boost track? So I've made one for our game. We're going to go to insert, search for a Roblox Racing Boost. I'll click on it to insert into our game. And we have arrows uh, indicating the direction the boost is going to go. So we can use our rotate tool to spin it around, get it going the way we want. And it does kind of what you would expect. It will go faster as you drive over it. And this can be used to great effect in your racing game. You can play around with the speed of cars. You know, you can go a lot faster than you normally would. It can be very exciting when you go over them. But it's also a really great source for challenge. 
take this example over here. Now, if we have two straightaway tracks, and this track on the right, all the boosts are all lined up. And that actually doesn't make it very difficult. It doesn't make it too much more di different than if the track was just straight without boosts. Sure, you go faster, but there's not too much to it. On this track on the left, I've just made the subtle difference of moving the, moving the uh, boosters offset a little bit. They're staggered. So the player actually does have to weave to hit all of them. And that can provide a great source of satisfaction to hit all those. It's a little bit trickier than just driving straight. So just keep that in mind when you're using boosts. You want to use them in interesting ways. You don't want to just add them for the sake of adding them. Another thing we can do with our boost tile is to make a jump. Jumps are a lot of fun in racing games. They're not super realistic. I don't think you'll see too many racetracks of this. But in Roblox, no one can get hurt. So let's add these. All we have to do is we can take the ramp tile that we already have and just put a boost on it. It's a little bit long, so we can copy and paste, make another one. We can launch our cars into the air over gaps or whatever, really. It can be a lot of fun. We also don't have to stick with just this ramp tile if you don't think that this is long enough or steep enough for your purposes. Always note that these models are not set in stone. You can always ungroup them. And we can change them up. So for instance, I'm just going to take this ramp tile, and I'm going to make it longer using the scale tool. Now keep in mind you'll probably want to make sure that it still stays on a grid so it snaps into your game nicely. I'm just making this one here quick for example. Just putting a road on top of it. And we can always add the fences, the fences and the, the stripes later for embellishment. For now, we're just going to stick to our ramp. Now all I have to do for this is just put boost tiles on it. And we have a longer ramp. Just put some more up front. And so you can go to pretty much any height or length ramp you want to get any kind of jump that you want. And jumps can be a really exciting way to break up your game again. They can also provide a little bit of challenge. Now, as with everything in your game, you probably don't want to use too many jumps. You don't want to get repetitive. So jumps should be in really dramatic places in your track and should really go over interesting things. For instance, jumps could go over, say, like a river, could go over other parts of the track, can even go over lava. Keep in mind, if you want to use the lava tile, we have it available in the toolbox. Just search for Roblox Racing Lava. Last thing we're going to talk about today is adding obstacles onto the track itself. These can be things like rocks or fallen down trees or what have you. Basically, they serve the same purpose as turns without providing the turn itself. It provides a small technical challenge that will slow down the race. Now, I've added a special part that I think can be a lot of fun to any racing game. I've called it the Roblox Oil Slick. So just search for Roblox Racing Oil Slick, and you can insert it into your game. And just drag it on the track where you like, and any car that drives over it will spin in place out of control and slow down. And so using all these challenges that we talked about, straightaways, turns, uh, boosts, jumps, some obstacles, we can create some really interesting games and because there's so many different tools to work with, we can create an enormous variety of racetracks. So that'll be all for this lesson, but stay tuned. Coming right up, we're going to start using all these principles that we've learned and apply them to a game. We're going to design our track. So thanks for watching, and remember, you make the game.